Usually the first step in reloading is resizing your brass. Whether it be new brass or once fired, you can buy once fired brass uh, or collect it up from the range. The first step in reloading is resizing. Now there's different types of resizing. And what we're doing is we're doing these old military guns and that. And I found it's best to just do a full length resizing. That means you resize the whole brass back to the specifications. Uh, you can, a lot of bench rest shooters and people who are in their accuracy will, uh, and you'll see it listed neck resizers. And basically all they're resizing is the neck, like to the shoulder of the case. And the idea behind that is once you have your gun and you fire the brass in the gun, the brass will contract. You know, that's how you extract it out. And a lot of people that are into, say, bench rest shooting or real high accuracy will only resize the neck. But they're using the same brass in that one individual gun again and again. That's a little bit of a specialty. We're not going to get into that, but that's, that's what it is. Uh, we're going to do just plain, basic, full-length resizing, which I normally use. Uh, the only time you have to worry is uh, in like assault rifles with the 223 or the 308. Uh, they do have special dies called small base resizing dies. And what that is, is the sizing die goes down a little extra more towards the base of the cartridge and just squeezes it a little more than, than a standard resizing die. And that's to help with the functioning in semi-automatic uh, guns like the AR-15 or something like that. That's, like I said, that's another specific thing. That's be the only difference. We're just using basic standard full-length resizing in the press. Okay, and I'll get up closer here and I'll show you what, what project we're doing and we'll get started. Alright, what we're going to do here is we have our brass, which is unprimed, brand new, 7.7 .7 by 58 Japanese brass. Um, again, by uh, Privy Partisan out of Serbia. They make a lot of these older military cartridge uh, brass, like the Japanese cartridges, the Carcano, and the uh, Austrian-Hungarian. And they're pretty reasonably priced. I think it was $50 for 100 brand new brass cases. Now you'd be asking why are we resizing brand new cases? Well as you see they get packed in these bags in bulk and get knocked around and tossed around, packaged in the store, thrown on a shelf. And what happens is you can see it, it gets knocked out of round a little. It's not quite round, there's a little dent, flat spot. So what we're going to do is since you're taking the time to reload, you might as well do everything right, right from the start. And we're going to resize this brass and get it right back to where it should be. One note, uh, always get all your little tools together and that. Think ahead, plan ahead. And uh, it'll save you a lot of hassle. So you just take your time, one step at a time, and go ahead. So we're going to resize the new brass. And now we're going to go, I'll show you how to set up the full length resizing die. Okay, here we go. We got our press, our resizing dies shell holder, and a little Allen wrench. I'll explain what each need. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to need shell holder. Since we're using RCBS, RCBS tells you to use their shell holder number three, which I happen to have one, RCBS shell holder number three. Shell holders are kind of universal and they'll fit in all presses, no matter who makes them. Uh, the only thing is the different companies may give them a different number. Like uh, RCBS number three may be a different number with lime in or with the lead. But they're all universal and you can find cross-reference charts. So if you get 
different equipment, which I have a mixture of equipment, uh, you can still use it together. And uh, some shell holders are good for four or five different calibers, so you'd only need one shell holder. Like this is good for 30 out 6, 308. So there's three different cartridges I can load with the one shell holder. Now we'll stick the shell holder into the uh, press. Basically, shell holder has this little round flange thing on the bottom. And what it does is it goes into this corresponding slot in the ram. This is the ram of the press. So you take that and slide it in and you press it in. You hear a click. So now your shell goes in there and that's basically how that works in the ram. A lot of presses will have some sort of automatic priming device so you can resize, knock out the used primer, and on the downstroke, prime. I don't have this attachment for this particular machine and I like doing my priming in a separate operation and I'll explain why when I get into priming. Okay, we have our shell holder installed. Now the next thing is with a full length resizer. Uh, usually when you get these right out of the box you shouldn't have to really fool around with it much. Okay? If you see there's a little lock screw in there and that's where you're going to lock it. And that's where your Allen wrench, right size Allen wrench, goes in there to lock this lock ring. So you're going to need your proper size Allen wrench for this. Take the die and back the lock ring all the way up. And as you see the let's see get it against my shirt. Pin, that's the pin that's gonna push out the primer. This thing should be all set the way it is right out of the box. You shouldn't really have to other than the depth and setting it into the press, you shouldn't have to fool with this at all. So how you set it, you run the ram up all the way to the top. I'll try to change my camera angle here so you can see this a little bit better. Alright, that's a little better. I had to lower the camera. As you can see, it goes up and there's a little gap right in there. Okay? Now, all you got to do with this is you thread it down. See that pin will go down in there? Just thread it down until it touches. You don't crank it or nothing, just so it touches. And then you take your lock nut. You turn your lock nut down. So it's in position. And then take the Allen wrench with the set screw and you lock it in. So now this should be set locked, ready to go. That's basically it. Just so it comes up and touches. Remember, no pressure, just so it touches. It's all you need. Now we're all set and ready. That's basically how you set a sizing die. That's all there is to it. Okay, now we're going to run a couple through here and I'm going to go through the case lubrication. And then we're going to run a couple up in the die. Alright, we got our cases. Now you got to lubricate the cases somehow. Because if you don't, they're going to get stuck in the die and then you're going to have all kinds of problems. And if you don't lubricate them properly, cases will tear the rims off in a shell holder and get stuck in a die. And then it's, it's difficult to get them out. So proper case lubrication is important. What I use, now there's two ways to do it. One way is the heavy oil on the pad and you roll it on the case lubrication pad and you got to be careful because if you get too much oil you'll get like uh, air pockets and it'll crush the shoulder or the neck. Uh, they came out with this a few years ago one shot lube it works pretty good I've tried it I've used it it's not supposed to harm the primers or the powder um, it's basically an aerosol. What you do is take it up 
and I spray some on. Spray it. And you can get it down into the neck and on the case itself. So, you get it lubed, and now we're going to run them up through the die. Alright, now, take a lubricated case, put it into the shell holder. And then just apply pressure with the arm, go up, and it comes down. And that's it. Okay, nice, round, right where it should be. Now, what I do with these is you can wipe this case lube off with a cloth, which I do. I just wipe it down, I keep a rag here, wipe it down. And then, this is where your loading block comes in. We know that this case is sized, so you go put it in your loading block. Run another one up. Okay, size into the loading block. That way you keep, and you can use the loading block to keep track. You know, this type of ammunition, I'm not going to load more than 20, 40 rounds at a time. It's, it's not a real, we're not getting that real heavy production. Now another thing, if you're running this case up in there, okay, and you're running it up in, and you start to get resistance, and I mean starts really, you don't have enough lube on the case, get it out. Don't force it. Do not force this down. It should go up smooth, fairly easy, without a lot of pressure. Okay, some pressure, but not, when you start feeling it bind when you're going down, that means you don't have enough lube. You could, you know, like I said, brass is soft. If you get it stuck in there and force it, you can tear the rim off the case. And you don't want to do that, and you'll have a, a case stuck in there. And I think I ran into that problem, and they do sell a stuck case remover, which basically you have to pull this out, there's a little flange that goes on the bottom of the uh, of the die. Got that set, and then you, when you take this out, just leave that lock ring there, and you should be able to, uh, you know, have it set. You should just be able to run it back into your press and be at the right, you know, just screw it down hand tight, and you should be right there where it should be. But what what? They'll do, if you get a case stuck in there, which has happened to me, they sell, you have to pull the stem out, and then there's like a little sleeve that'll slip there, and you drill and tap the bottom of the case out, and then you take an Allen wrench and it like pulls, you have to, you know, destroy the case, drill and tap it, and then you use a screw with an Allen wrench and it'll actually pull that case out of there. It can be a difficult operation, so case lubrication is important. And then, like I said, once this is set, you screw that back in. Oh, that wasn't too tight. Readjust it. There. Lock ring moved on me. Okay. Get it down. Make sure this thing is locked all the way. With the Allen wrench. Oh. So there it is. Okay. All right. That's about it for full length resizing. Like I said, lubrication is important because that's the one thing in this operation that'll, you know, go wrong is if you get a case stuck up in a die and it's pretty much a pain to remove. Alright, any questions, comments, please, please feel free to uh, express yourself. Okay, thank you.